Did you have a good Halloween? Are you ready for all this voting to be over with today? Hmm. Yep, I think we're all a little sick of it. Today's the day. What gets you up so bright and early this morning besides school? Are you, would you say you're a morning person? Hey, Alex. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, I guess I should be thankful you're here then, huh? Hi, Amelia. Hi, Alyssa. <sighs> Your tie dye is so colorful. Hi, Kaden. For everyone to arrive here. All right, Alex, I'll look into that. <clears throat> I can do it right now. I got two minutes. Let me go take a peeky. I have it graded right here, so I'll just go and put it in, I guess. I don't know how I missed it, but, you know, it happens. Thank you for letting me know. Unintentional mistake. See where I went wrong. Yep. I don't know. I'm putting that in right now, Alex. Sorry about that. Okay, you're good to go. Thanks for the heads up. Good morning, everybody. I'm just, oh, there we go. Okay, so we're going to start with that warm-up this morning. So go ahead and pull up your uh, Google Doc if that's what you've been using. And we're going to start with that today. So let me get there. Oh, good. Kermit the Frog's here. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to turn my camera off because it moves so slow when I have it on. So I'm just going to shut that down. Maybe. There it goes. Okay. Maybe we can get it to load a little faster here. Do, do, do. 
Okay, so remember you're just doing N1 question and it says, um, what do you call an overall state of wellness or total health? That was your question. Make sure you got caps and ends, complete sentences. I have to say that the warm ups that I've graded recently have been a lot better, and even the um, demo page has been a lot better with sentence structure, periods, caps, highlighting. So good job. Keep it up. Got about a minute left. Twenty some seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, time's up. Um, I want to talk a little bit about some things that I'm changing. So in Google Classroom on the stream, I'm gonna start putting the video of the day here. So once the video for this class or recording downloads and I'm able to manipulate it, I'm gonna put it in the stream and I'll put like the date for sure and then a little bit about what we did. So um, that should be located there. Um, so just if you miss class or if I did notes and you didn't get something that I wrote down or something, that's where you'll find that information would be in the stream is where the video will be. And then uh, school-wide policy for virtual learning from this point forward, uh, all late work will be reduced to 80%. Um, that started Monday. I sent out a stream that it began Monday. And so any assignments that I got Monday and thereafter that were late were uh, marked to an 80 percentage. So um, just keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, you also need to know that any late work will not be accepted after the unit. OK, so we have a test probably. Um, you know, it's. I would say maybe a week or so away, but once that test has been given, no other work for that unit can be turned in. Okay, so that's kind of where, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going forward with. So um, if you have any questions, you can stay back in class or you can put something in the chat. Um, I will hopefully see it. And uh, otherwise we're going to continue to move forward at this time. So um, I'm going to be finishing uh, the Google Slides today. And then um, I have a little worksheet called Words Words and Wellness that'll help you out for your test, some vocab. And then um, we're gonna go over that worksheet by using Quizlet. So I'll need everyone to unmic that has kind of a quiet environment that could just respond to the Quizlet. And then once we get done with that, we're gonna move into a case study with a student named Carl. So that's kind of like our happenings of this uh, block of time. So. I'm going to go ahead and grab the um, Google Slides, and then we'll go from there. OK. All right, so this is kind of where we ended up talking. This was the next slide, so it's just referring to the scientific method, which I know all of you you know, or at least had some exposure to, whether it be in elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, but there's the scientific method. 
you know, the process that researchers use to answer questions. Usually there's three components to it. There's make the observation, state the hypotheses. Um, that's usually a guess or something that can be tested and verified. Uh, revise experiments to test and verify results. And then sometimes people will have a theory. Um, it's a principle that tries to explain something that happens in nature, although it is based on evidence. Um, a theory is not a fact, it still requires further testing. So theory is one of your terms that um, I believe to be on your test or part of your test. So if I was you, I'd write that down. Um, so for example, somebody might use the scientific method if they were looking at statistics and let's say they um, saw in their eyes that men do not tend to live as long as women. So this might prompt them to raise the question, why? Why do men have a shorter life expectancy, expectancy than females? And so they're going to um, run that through the scientific method and try to figure out why that occurs. So that would be just an example of how you could use the scientific method. Um, so I'm sure you've seen this in your classroom where you have like the poster that has like all the procedural things when it comes to the scientific method like purpose research hypotheses experiment and analyze conclude so those are all aspects but one thing we want to look at is how to evaluate research reports so as a consumer we don't become victimized to believing things that aren't really true so one of the things you need to think about is is the information intended to update a professional or to pique consumers interest Okay, so if, if, the, if the research was done to just pique consumers interest or to try to sell a product, then we may think to ourselves, you know, maybe this isn't as valid as it should be because it's not given to or to update a professional like maybe in the field. Uh, be aware of who is relaying the information. Is it a media reporter or a health and nutritional professional? Uh, take note of the size and length of the study. Did it involve just eight people and they were only observed for three weeks or was it something like 8,000 people that were observed for three years? So that's kind of our issue right now with the COVID-19 is that these vaccines that they're putting out, you know, they don't have a lot of testing behind them. And that's why uh, consumers are a little bit leery to just be like, okay, let me line up and get to get this shot or whatever. Um, usually drugs go through a screening of uh, time and lots of studies. Most of the time a uh, medicine, it can take up to 10 plus years before it can even be put on the market. Um, you know, and that's just, you know, medicine, it's not something that's being rushed like the COVID-19. So that's a little concerning. Um, also keep in mind that many experiments are conducted to prove or disprove a theory. Not all experiments will yield the same results and a single study is not a sufficient basis for recommending changes in behavior. So you wanna have you know, several reports that you're looking at that come up with the same findings and then you might be able to believe that research. So a little bit about uh, healthy living in the United States. Um, I underlined that one statistic because it is on your test. Um, but studies do show that many people in the United States are not following the most helpful eating and physical activity patterns. Studies also show that nutritional problems tend to increase as income levels decrease. So um, a number of health fitness problems are affected, are affecting the nation state of wellness. So about one third of the people in the United States eat an, in, eat an inadequate diet. One out of three adults is overweight and one out of four is more than 20% overweight. Popular lifestyle includes less and less physical activity. Important nutrients are missing from the diet for some groups of people such as teens and older adults. Fat, cholesterol, sodium, and sugar intake are higher than recommended. So these problems arise for several reasons. Some people do not have enough money to acquire adequate nutrition. Others lack the information and skills needed to select a nutritious diet. Some people may not know they need to make changes. And still others simply just choose to ignore the current nutritional recommendations. One reason some people give for disregarding nutrition recommendations is some nutrient messages are unclear. They're not sure what to believe um, or they contradict each other. 
uh, findings from one study seems to dispute the things from another study. So what is health conscious? What is a health conscious person supposed to believe as uh, he or she tries to make wise lifestyle choices? So best thing you can do is educate yourself the best that you can. And hopefully that will help kind of weed out conflicting messages or things that uh, you question. And uh, usually that's a good rule of thumb is just, you know, to be educated, knowing that maybe or not, this is a false study, or maybe I need to research it a little bit more, or maybe I need to go to a reputable site or a government agency that actually has to update their statistics and do studies and things like that versus, you know, a person at random that's just doing it for themselves. So just some things to think about and to consider. Okay. So um, if you go to Google Classroom and you go to the assignment called Words and Wellness, okay, um, what I'm going to, what you need to do is just go through. And if you took notes, it should be pretty easy. So I just moved that. It should be pretty easy to answer the questions because it's all vocabulary that we've used in this whole uh, PowerPoint or Google Slides show. Um, but I want you to take about 10 minutes to answer as many as you can. And what I would do is I would just go through them. And if I know the answer, put it in. If not, skip it. And then go to the next one. If I know it, put it in. If not, skip it. Hopefully you don't skip all of them because, you know, to me, the, a lot of the information that I went over is... Um, something that I know that most of you have heard before and um, hopefully you'll be able to fill in a good portion of that worksheet. So let's take a little bit of time to do that. And I'm gonna use a little timer on the screen so you can kind of keep track on how much time you have. So we're gonna go ahead and set that timer for 10 minutes. And I would hope that you could finish in that amount of time. Remember, I'm not gonna be going over that worksheet verbatim but I'm gonna do a Quizlet that goes over all the terminology and hopefully you can figure out where everything goes, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start this timer. Um, you have 10 minutes to get your words and wellness done. So time is starting now.
Wait, what are we doing? I wasn't in the room. Okay. So um, in Google Classroom, there's a worksheet called Words and Wellness. And we're just opening that and going through it and answering the ones that we know. And that's, we have six more minutes to work on it. Okay. Okay.
About 52 seconds. Try to finish up. Okay. Keep those out. Don't turn them in quite yet so that you have them when we go over the um, vocab on Quizlet. Okay. So let me open that here. Where is it? Okay, so if you have a quiet background, uh, you can unmic so that you can just tell me what the answer is. And if you um, have a noisy background, you can always unmic and kind of chime in. Okay, so uh, an overall state of well being or total health, what is the answer to that? What is the answer? Look at your paper. Can anyone find it? Or remember what it was? How about Connor? Do you know what this one is? Connor, am I on mute still? I thought I unmuted myself. Yeah, I am off mute. Hello, people. I don't know that one. <laughs> okay. Does anyone know that one? Pristine health? What'd you say? Pristine? Like no. Condition? Oh, I no. Kind of, but it's not one of the words we didn't we talked about in class. Isn't it life span? It's oh. wellness. How about this one? Fitness of the body refers to how well your body functions. What did we talk about that would cover that term? Physical health. Whoops. Let me go back. Whoopsie. <laughs> yes. Good job. Okay. What about this one? The state of being comfortable with yourself and others and with your surroundings. What would that one be? State of being comfortable with yourself. So we just talked about physical health. What other types of health would constitute this? Social. Thank you. Or actually, this one's mental, how you feel about yourself. Okay. All right. What about how well you get along with others? Social. Yeah, that one was social. Good job. Okay. Uh, health care that focuses on all aspects of the patient. That's physical, mental, and social. Do you remember what that term was called? When you look at like the whole person. Starts with an H. Isn't it like holistic? Or yeah, something? nice job. Yes, it is. Good job. Okay. Uh, what is the leading cause of death in the United States? Wait, can you slow down? Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to go back? Yes. Okay. Because I didn't want to spell it. Which one for this one? Oh, I know what you're talking about. This one? Let me know when you get it down so I can move on. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think this is where. What is the leading cause of death in the United States? This one's not on your list, but it was something we did last week. Who remembers this? Wasn't it like heart disease? Yes, thank you. Yes, it was. 
Okay, what is the leading cause of death and injury for adolescents? Accidents. Yeah, good job. Okay, what about this one? Influences people in your age and social group have on your behavior? I think it should just say influence people your age. We got to get that in out of there. Gear pressure? Yeah, yes. The process by which your body takes in and uses food. Nutrition. Ding, ding, ding. Good job. A substance that provides nourishment essential for growth and maintenance of life. Also starts with an N. Nourishment? No, that's the word in the definition. <laughs> Nutrients? Yes, thank you. Okay, the average length of life a person living in the same environment is called life what? Span. Mm, it could be called that, but that's not what we've talked about. What did we call it? Life? It starts with an E. Expectancy. Yes. Thank you. Uh, suggested answer to a scientific question which can be tested and verified. A suggested answer. We just went over this. What is it? Hypotheses. Uh, the state of the physical world, including the conditions of water, air, and food, is what kind of quality? Water, air, food. What kind of quality is that? It starts with an E. It's what we live in every day. Have I stumped you Earth on these? Quality? What was it? Earth quality? <laughs> you said environmental. You <laughs> environmental. Yes. Okay. Uh, death that occurs due to lifestyle behaviors that lead to a fatal accident or the formation of an avoidable disease. Think back to our timeline. What was that called when you were at Premature. death? What, say that one more time. Premature. Yes, good job. And then the identification of a disease. So the doctor is going to render a what when he's identifying the disease? Diagnosis. Yes, nice job. What about this one? A state of wellness characterized by a peak physical, mental, or social well-being. Peak. This is also on the um, timeline. Do you remember what that word was? It starts with an O. Optimal. Yes, nicely done. And the last one, uh, process researchers use to find answers to their questions. What is that process? What do your science teachers use when they're doing an experiment? They're not going to be happy you guys aren't answering this question. <laughs> what is that? What do they use in science? Process of elimination? No! That would be more like math class, wouldn't it? <laughs> no? It's two words. Actually, three words. No, two words. I'm thinking syllables. The scientific method, people. All right. So if you're done with your words and wellness, you can turn that in. But I pretty much did all the answers by doing the um, Quizlet. So hopefully you were able to uh, cue in on that. 
Okay, let me check my to-do list, make sure I got everything I need to do. All right, so now we're going to go and work on... Um, Someone have a question for me? Okay. So we're going to work on a case study. Does anyone no, know? I had a question. Oh, yeah, go ahead. If if you didn't get all of them, because um, where's, where's your um, Quizlet? Yeah. So we can look at it. Um, I will make a note. I can actually uplink that to the uh, to the Google Classroom. So I think I can just put it right in there. Thank you. Yep. Or you can always watch the video back because I'm going to put that in the stream. But I will make a note to put in Quizlet um, in Google Classroom for you. It's weird because you can only do one class at a time. But um, yeah, anyway. Okay. So we're going to talk about a case study. Who can tell me what a case study is? Have you ever heard of the word case study? Maybe you don't know what it is, but you've heard of it. Anybody heard of something like that? A uh, doctor doing a case study or... They were... I've heard of it, but I don't know what it means. Okay, so you've heard of it. All right, so a case study would be like, um, I'm going to take these 200 people and I'm going to give them this medication, let's say, or I'm going to study this about them. And then this other group... I'm going to give them like a placebo, which you know is a fake medication, and I'm going to do some testing, and I'm going to look at all aspects of their life, and I'm going to, you know, try to figure out, you know, what the medicine does for them, if it helps them, doesn't help them, or if I'm just doing a study on them, I'm going to study all aspects of them and find similarities or differences or figure out, you know, why something happened. So we're going to do a little case study on this uh, young man named Carl. But to get there, we have to do a few other things along the way. Okay. So um, I have a couple questions for you. Let me get to that. Um, whoops. It's not what I wanted to have happen. <laughs> okay. So I have some questions for you that I have on Padlet, Padlet, whatever it's called. Um, and I'm going to link this in the chat at the bottom and I need you guys to go and join it. Um, it is two questions that I'll ask you. It's called, what do you, what, who do you know has had a heart attack or stroke? What happened? How are they coping? And if you don't know anybody that's had a heart attack or stroke, then just tell me what you know about a heart attack or stroke. So on this Padlet, you can answer one or the other. You do not have to answer both because you're either you know somebody or you know something about what we're going to talk about. So I'm going to go ahead and drop that into the stream. And I'm going to ask you to join it and to fill out one of the what, what I call like sticky notes to um, the Padlet. Okay, so go to that website, follow that link, and then go ahead and fill out the Padlet. And I'll be, it's on my screen, so you should be able to see it. Would going into AFib count as a heart attack or no? Well, AFib is where your heart is beating irregularly. Yeah. Um, and so that would be, I, could, I would say that that could lead to a stroke because it's not pulsating, your heart's not pushing the blood like it should, and it could coagulate and cause a clot. So I think that would be something that you could talk a little bit about. And um, even though they haven't experienced those things, which is good, uh, it's still something that could lead to that. Okay, so you could either okay. put what you know about AFib and heart attack or stroke, or you can talk about the person that is has experienced AFib. Okay. okay. And remember, if you're going to tell me about someone you know, tell me kind of what happened. Maybe, you know, some of their lifestyle choices that may have caused that to occur. Um, and then they're coping. You know, some people unfortunately pass away and that's their coping strategy. But some people are also put on medication or something along those lines of exercise regimen, different eating habits, things like that. So um, you could tell me a little bit about what the coping mechanism is that they're experiencing.
Okay, so let's take a look at some of these things that you wrote down. So it looks like to me that, you know, uh, we're seeing an older generation that has experienced heart attack or stroke. So it's usually grandma, grandpa. Um, you know, you're talking about all the things that happen with a stroke, you know, you could have a mini stroke, which maybe the person didn't even realize happened. And then later on, they went to the doctor and found out that they had a stroke. So I hear a little bit of that. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. Um, Oh, wow, somebody had a stroke while uh, teaching, it looks like. Nothing bad happened. But, um, you know, it does seem like you hear about it. This person's talking about the symptoms, about shooting pain down the arm, um, taking medication, um, changing an eating habit, and that kind of, you know, changed the game. And then we go over to the heart attack, what do you know? We have people talking about uh, high blood pressure, about some of the risk factors, overweight, being unhealthy in their diet. Um, it, stroke could cause paralysis on one side of the body because it affects your brain. Um, let's see what else. Yep, uh, blood carries oxygen. So wherever that stroke occurs is the um, oxygenated blood is not getting to those areas and the tissue is dying. Um, energy drinks offered, uh, this person, they believe that could, could have caused AFib, which causes their heart to beat irregularly, which can cause issues with stroke, which sometimes they have to be on blood thinners. Uh, yeah, heart attacks can be very painful. Yeah, I hope you never have one, Cameron. <laughs> okay, so, um, thank you for all of you that participated in this. So I have another Padlet that I'm going to link for you. I guess I could have added another column. I didn't realize that, but you know, live and learn. It's all a learning curve here at this time. Let's see if I can get back to it. Um, ba -da -bum. This one I'm going to have to link for you too, because it's, I guess it's on a different Padlet. Whoopsie. Oh, goodness sakes. <laughs> Uh, my fingers are not working for me very well.
you guys heard anything I've said? <laughs> I I wasn't sure. Oh. It... No. No, okay. I thought you're muted, so I think you're just. Oh talking. my god! Okay. <laughs> I'm having a breakdown. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so what you want to do is use the other link to the Padlet. Go to Padlet and then answer both those questions. One is about risk factors that cause a person to have a heart attack or stroke. And then the second question talks about, you know, do you think a high schooler should be concerned about his or her risk factors for heart attack or stroke? If you put yes, give me the reason why. And if you say no, give me the reason why. You do have to answer both, though. This isn't uh, one or the other this time. It's both. Sorry about that. I did not realize I was muted. Okay, let's see what you guys said. So, um, behaviors, I heard a lot of smoking, bad eating habits, energy drinks, uh, obesity. Um, trying to scroll and it's not letting me. Maybe I'm at the bottom. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, bad choices, lack of physical activity, unhealthy eating. Um Smoking was one that keeps coming up. Exercise, poor choices, drinking. Okay. And then, so we have uh, somebody said no because it usually happens to older people. If there's an older people, yes, because the choices you make could affect you in the long run. Yes, because anyone could get a heart attack. We were just not most likely, but if we do enough to affect our heart, we might have one. Runs in the family, so we got heredity in there uh, because they can eat, start eating. Uh, yes, it runs in the family, and you need to know because you can start eating healthy. Or I got it. Depends if you are really unhealthy, then maybe because it still usually happens to older people. No, because normally you don't get them until you're older. Yes, because the things that you do now could lead up to cause a stroke. Yes, even though we are teenagers, every decision has a consequences. So we should be healthy to avoid premature death. Yes, because our choices today could impact our future. No, not too much because I never hear of people, person as a young uh, high school student having a heart attack or stroke. So uh, it didn't really say that you get them. It just says, do you need to be concerned about your risk factors? Just to clarify. Okay. Now, I want to go back here and just go over this statistic. About 1 million U.S. teenagers have high blood pressure, high blood sugar levels, or other conditions that may put them at risk for heart disease later in life. And that's according to the American Heart Association. Okay, so here is our case study. 
This is our guy here. His name's Carl. He is a typical high school student. You kind of need to remember these statistics. So he's in ninth grade. He's got lots of friends. His favorite subjects, biology, he gets pretty good grades in most of his classes. Uh, Carl does not play any organized sports, but he does like to skateboard at the local skate park two to three times a week. So I just want you to be processing in your mind um, the evidence that you think we would need to gather to determine if Carl is at risk for cardiovascular disease. Okay. So you just right now in that light bulb stage where you're just trying to come up with what would I need to know? about him to determine whether he's at risk. Okay, so we gotta first talk about cardiovascular disease. Does anybody know how they would define cardiovascular disease? Like what would you say about it? Okay, a lot of input there. <laughs> okay, so what you need to know about cardiovascular disease is that it's another name for the circulatory system. So to break it down, you can take the word and you can divide it into two. So when you do cardio workout, at, let's say that, um, oh shoot, now I can't remember. Um, let's say the PE teacher, why can I remember her name? Help me. Anyway, the PE teacher, and she says, we're doing cardio today. What would, what would you say to that? What do you think she's talking about? Give me something that would be a cardio. What's cardio? What is a cardio workout? I know you guys work out and you're in PE. What do you do when you do a cardio workout? What do you do? Any thoughts? Running. Running. Okay. Yes. Thank you. All right. So running. And remember that your heart is a muscle. Okay. So if I was going to try to get my bicep big, uh, I could run, but that's probably not going to do the best to get my bicep muscular. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work that muscle. Okay. And that's going to get me a big bicep. So when you do cardio, you actually are working your heart muscle. So you're making your heart muscle stronger. So another word for cardio is your heart, okay? Whenever you do a cardio workout, just think about I'm working my heart muscle. So that would be anything that gets that baby pumping. Running, walking, uh, you know, any anything, jumping rope, playing basketball, swimming, all of those are cardio activities. Okay, another word for vascular would be the word vessel. Okay, so when you're doing your cardio activity, you're pumping your blood through your arteries and veins and capillaries, and that's what vascular means, is vessel. Okay, so what we're trying to figure out is if Carl is at risk for cardiovascular disease. So that means that his heart is, you know, at some point in his life, is he going to be susceptible for it? Okay, so uh, cardiovascular de disease does include a heart attack. Sometimes it's referred to as a myocardial infarction. Then there's a stroke, hypertension, other word, tension, stress, or high, high blood pressure, and then atherosclerosis. Okay, so all those diseases are considered cardiovascular diseases, and as their names imply, they are affecting your heart and your blood vessels, okay? All right, so the first thing that we're going to cover is uh, atherosclerosis, okay? And it's a condition in which the artery walls thicken as a result of the buildup of fatty material, Okay, your blood vessels are really elastic. And so um, if they become rigid, that's going to be a problem because uh, the blood, it's going to take a lot more force to get the blood through there because they're not elastic. Okay, and that's going to weaken those walls and cause problems. As you can kind of see in the image there, 
um, some issues about atherosclerosis. And what they call that fatty buildup is plaque. So the plaque builds up and then um, it causes this um, congestion and then it does a complete blockage, okay? Um, to put it into terms that will help you understand is that if you've ever tried to get on an expressway off an exit and um, it's just bumper to bumper, it's really hard to get your car into that line of traffic. And what it ends up happening is somebody has to stop, let you in, then you sit there and then another car comes and they have to move back. And basically it's just taking a lot longer for you to get to your destination, which is kind of what happens when there's a blockage or when there's, when the tube, when the artery or vein is getting smaller and smaller is that the blood gets backed up and oxygen can't get to where it needs to flow. Okay. Another way to look at it too is like if there is some place in our school where there's always a backup, like maybe in the lunch line or maybe going up the stair back, one of the back staircases or, you know, sometimes in the bathroom, let's say, <laughs> you know, there's a lineup. Okay. So it's going to take you a little bit longer to get to wherever you need to go because there's more people in front of you. Okay. So that's kind of a, an example of atherosclerosis and how it can affect you and um, put it into things that you are familiar with. So the, whoops, the next time we meet, I have these little videos that I'm gonna show you on each one. Um, so it kind of helps explain a little bit more. And then we'll kind of start with that when I see you again. So try to remember, um, why do I always do that? Try to remember where we were, we were on atherosclerosis. I'm gonna try to make a note of it <laughs> just so I don't forget. But that's kind of where we were, and um, we'll talk more as we go through. But I want to, you know, just give you time to ask any questions that you may have in our last two minutes or kind of decompress for your next second hour coming in. Maybe you have to gather up some papers or something like that, you know, to prepare for that. But, um, you know, you are dismissed unless you want to talk about something or, um, you know, you need to let me know any information. So I will stick around until 835, but um, you can exit at this time. Ramos, are you alive or did you sleep through this whole thing? Ramos. I'm alive. You are alive. Okay. All right. Yes. I hope you got your assignments in. I'm going to be turning a lot of assignments today. Okay. Very good. Remember, if it's late, though, it's 80%. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, have All a good right. one, and I'll see you the next time. Yep. You too. All right. Bye. Yeah.